Welcome back. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about how to draw our own causal diagrams. So in the last video, we talked about what causal diagrams are. They're our way of taking our idea of how we think the world works and writing it down in a simple graph that we're eventually going to be able to use to figure out how we can identify the causal effects that we are interested in. So before we even talk about how to use these diagrams to identify effects, I want to talk about how we can build our own diagrams, because uh, that's important, because I think that helps to get across the idea of what exactly we're doing with them. We're taking our idea of how the world works and we're putting it into that diagram. And what this comes down to is figuring out what we think is important to the functioning of the system that we're interested in and wh uh, which things cause which other things. We need to figure that out. And once we do this, we're going to be able to basically take our understanding of how we think things operate and draw out a model. Right? If you've taken previous classes in, say, economics, you might be familiar with how to model behavior uh, or model a system. You might say, OK, well, I think that you know this is a determinant of GDP. And so when I write out my GDP equation, it's going to have, for example, investment in it. And that is one way of writing out your way of understanding how the world works. We're doing a similar thing here. We're going to say that whatever we think affects anything else is going to be, and that might be important in our model. So let's do some of that. So let's talk about the steps to creating a causal diagram. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to consider all the variables that we think are going to be important to the data generating process. That is, what variables do we think there are out in the world that matter in this system? And these ones that are especially important to make sure that we include are anything that we think might have an effect on the treatment variable. So we've been using the example of going to the doctor's office and the effect of the doctor's visit on your health. Okay, so what are some variables that might be important in that system? Well, your, how sick you were before you went to the doctor's office would be pretty important because uh, that might affect whether or not you go. Uh, that would also probably be linked to the level of health that you have afterwards. Uh, things like your, uh, whether or not you have health insurance might be in there too. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different things that we can imagine that might affect whether or not you go to the doctor's office. And that also might be related to how sick you might be in the future. So we want to make a list of all of those things. And that's the first step that we're going to take. And we're going to do an example in a second. Uh, a second thing that you're going to want to consider is how can you simplify this model? So a lot of the variables might work in the system in very similar ways. So for example, uh, we talk about insurance being something that might affect whether you go to the doctor's office. Now, that is likely to be something that's going to affect whether you go to the doctor's office. And it also might be related to how sick you get later. Having less money might also be linked to, for example, not being able to take time off of work to get better. Not being able to take time off of work would affect whether you go to the doctor's office and also likely affect whether you're sick in the future. If you can't afford to live in a clean place, that might affect whether or not you can go to the doctor's office. And it might also affect whether you're sick in the future. Now, these three things are all going to affect whether you go to the doctor's office, but they're likely to matter in similar ways. So to simplify our model, we might combine them all together and just have one thing representing, say, financial pressures, just to simplify our model. So we figure out all the variables that are important, and then we simplify that list where possible. The third thing we're going to want to do is but then we're going to want to consider or what, which variables do we think are going to affect which other variables. We're basically going to draw in all the causal arrows that we think are going to be there. So if we think that insurance is going to affect whether you go to the doctor's office, we're going to draw an arrow from insurance to going to the doctor's office, right? An arrow from here to here. Now we do have to make the decision. What direction is that arrow going to go in? Or is there going to be an arrow there at all? We might not think that two variables affect each other at all. We might think that they're related to each other, in which case we might think that something else is causing both of them. I'll get to that in a second. So now we have done all of the things that we need to do. We've listed out our variables, we've simplified, and we've drawn arrows from one thing to another. And that's it. That's it. Once we've done all those things, we have our causal diagram. So let's do an example of this. So let's talk about the effect of a year, an additional year of education on your earnings. So if we could reach in, causality, if we could reach in and change the amount of education that you have, what would that do to your earnings later on down the line? Okay, so let's go through our steps. Step number one, we're going to think about all the things that might be important in this system, right? And what's gonna, what do we mean by system here? Well, anything that's going to relate to whether or not you get more education, what your earnings are going to be in the future. All of these things might be important. And that's going to be a really long, long list. Your underlying ability. If you're particularly good at school, that would probably affect whether how much school you get. And it would also probably affect what you're going to earn later on. Uh, your socioeconomic status, the demographics that you have, right? There might be discrimination of some sort, whether or not your school requires physical education. Uh, maybe you don't like that. Maybe you're going to drop out to avoid that. Maybe that would affect your earnings or not. Uh, when you were born, 
People, you know, the levels of education have been rising over time. Somebody who's born in 1994 is likely to get more education than somebody who was born in 1974. Uh, your location, certain areas have more access to education than others. Uh, whether or not you're forced to go to school, whether there's a compulsory schooling law that forces you to, to say, finish your high school degree. Uh, whether you have job connections might affect your earnings in the future, right? Do your parents know somebody who has a job for you? It might affect all sorts of things. Uh, now, these things don't necessarily have to all affect both your education and your earnings. They might affect just one or the other. They might be somewhere else in the system entirely. We're just trying to get a good list of things that might be relevant in this scenario. Basically, you can ask yourself, if I want to know the effect of education on earnings, what variables might be relevant to education and or earnings and or other variables that are important in the system? Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify. We might want to, you, know, you can imagine I've listed like eight or nine things you could come up with a thousand variables that might be relevant in this scenario, right? Especially if we're talking about social science, the list of things that are important to some tiny degree is endless, okay? But we can't possibly draw all those things on our diagram, which is just going to confuse us. It's not going to be as helpful as we want it to be. So we're going to want to simplify. We're going to do this in two ways. One is if we think that there's anything that's in there that, you know, might be a little bit important, but really just a trivial amount, we can probably kick it out of there. So for example, I mentioned physical education requirements. Maybe if there's physical, physical requirements at your school, you might drop out to avoid them. It would affect the number of years of education that you have. Now, there are probably some people out there who have dropped out of school to avoid physical education. Probably not a major factor. So we can probably kick that one out the door and simplify our model considerably. Now, make sure that you actually think that it's only trivially important. If you get that wrong, obviously your model is going to be missing something. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to combine. So, for example, I had a couple of things in there like socioeconomic status, uh, demographics, uh, region, and those are all likely to factor into the model in similar ways, right? There might be some, you know, disadvantages that being in one of those groups might might uh, might cause to you that might make you get less education or maybe you're privileged, maybe you get more education. And those two same things could carry over to your earnings, but they're likely to fit on a similar spot in the diagram. So we might combine them all uh, in just maybe one variable we can call background, your demographic background. Uh, and then that would simplify our model as well. So we've done both of those things. We've kicked out a couple of variables that we don't think are all that important. Uh, and also we've combined some variables that we think are likely to act in similar ways. Now we're going to think, okay, what direction do we think the arrows are going to go in? So for example, the compulsory schooling laws. This is a, these are laws that force you to stay in school for longer. So almost certainly the law is going to cause you to get more schooling. So we would draw a line from compulsory schooling law to schooling, how much education you get. Your background is going to likely have, be a, have some sort of causal effect on your education. It's also likely to have some sort of causal effect on your earnings. So we would probably uh, put a line from your background to your education and from background to earnings. And because those compulsory schooling laws are determined by where you live, we probably draw a line from your background to the compulsory schooling laws as well. We want to make sure to get all those variables in there or all the arrows in there because these arrows are really important. And especially, it's especially important to make sure that if you leave an arrow out, that you're pretty sure that that arrow should be left out. By leaving an arrow out, by having any two variables in there where there's no arrow between them, you're assuming that neither of those variables affects the other. That might be a pretty strong assumption to make, especially in social science where to some degree, everything pretty much affects everything else to some degree. So let's do this example with our education. So we're going to start out with our effective interest. We draw our treatment variable there, education, uh, on the board, and we draw an arrow from education to earnings. We think that your education affects your earnings. Next, we're going to consider some other variables that might be in here. We think that your background and the year that you're born and uh, your compulsory schooling laws and where you live, all that sort of stuff is going to affect your level of education. So we're going to draw lines from those things to education. Next, we might think that there are some variables that are going to affect your earnings directly as well. So some of the background variables that we already put in, like what year you're born or location or your background, those are probably going to affect your earnings directly. So we draw arrows from those to earnings. Uh, the job connections that we mentioned before, that's going to affect your earnings, but might not affect your education in the same way. We also have compulsory schooling. We don't think that there's an arrow from compulsory schooling to earnings. Now, compulsory schooling might affect your earnings because it made you get more education, but that's, you know, we can follow the path there. We can, we would go from compulsory schooling to education and then to earnings. There's no direct link from compulsory schooling to earnings. Now, there's a couple other things we might add in here as well. well. We might think that two variables are related to each other. They're correlated, but neither of them causes the other. How are we going to deal with that? So we would put in, in that case, a common cause. So for example, your location and your demographic background are likely to be correlated, right? If you look at a map of you know, the country or, or the world or wherever it is, 
people of different backgrounds tend to be clustered in different geographic locations. And so they're correlated with each other, but it's not like one of them causes the other, right? And so we might think that there's some other factor that's causing both. I tend to write these in as U because maybe, maybe uh, they're unobserved, U for unobserved that I can't measure them. But I think that these things, that these, some sort of unobserved factor, maybe I don't even know what it is, is causing both of those things. So I draw an arrow from U to both of those things. And that shows that they're going to be correlated, right? Because you can sort of see how they're related to each other through U, but neither of them causes the other directly. Uh, and that's it. That's how you draw your causal diagram. So to sort of recap, you have, you, have your, you have the system that you're looking at. You're interested in the effect of some treatment variable on some outcome variable. You're going to make a list of all the variables that you think might be important in that system. Uh, they're going to be especially important to think about those variables if they cause your treatment. Uh, but everything is important, even if it doesn't directly cause your treatment. Then once you've made your list, uh, you're going to want to... Uh, simplify a little bit. Maybe some variables are maybe not really that important. You can kick them out. Uh, maybe some variables are really going to affect the system in the same way, and you might want to combine them to make your model a little bit simpler to look at for now. Finally, once you have your final list of variables, you're going to draw arrows between them. So any variable that you think causes another variable, you're going to draw a line from that arrow to the other one. If you think they have some common cause, that neither of them causes the other, but they are correlated with each other, you might put in some common cause variable, might call it U1 or U2 or U3, and then draw an arrow from that common cause to both of them to show that they're related to each other, but neither of them causes the other. So we had an example in the last video of buying ice cream and wearing shorts. Neither of them causes the other, but there's some common cause temperature that makes that causes both of them and makes them be correlated with each other. And that's it. That's how you can draw a causal diagram. Thank you.